Well, this is where the debugging process gets interesting. This is where the problems start. So, hello who? Lupulus was supposed to be a plug and play chip. We had already taped out the Pulp NX platform several times before. The package was compatible with the silicon proven Sansa board and the top level design was almost equivalent to the Bianca chip. So we were really supposed to take the Bianca chip, take it out, put the, put the Lupulus chip inside, run the Hello World program and everything was supposed to work right out of the box. But the chip doesn't react. So what do you do? Well, obviously you check the voltages. So we check the voltages and everything really looks fine. We check the clock signal. We stick a little probe inside the package. We see that the clock is getting to the chip. It really looks fine. Where is the program crashing? Well, I'm kind of skipping a lot of a lot of time and a lot of uh, frustration. But we see here that at some point we have this type of a uh, um, response from the chip. And looking at it with the different experts, we understand that, that that there's no UART communication. So what do we do now? Well. First thing that you kind of want to check when you know that everything's really supposed to work is you want to know if the chip was bonded properly. One possible point of failure is the chip pin pinout. The chip passes LVS, so we know that the IOs are compatible with the design. That should work, but how actually did we check the bonding? Well, bonding is undoubtedly a potential single point of failure. We have a spreadsheet kind of like this that maps the pads on the die, the name of the net, the, the number of the pin in the package and the number of the pin in the PCB. And everything there is done by hand and we want to see that it sets up. We also have this type of a schematic that shows our die over here, the numbers of the pads over here, and where they're supposed to connect to the package pins over here. So that is all done by hand. It's all looked at by hand. There's no like um, official LVS kind of automated flow that checks that we did this correctly. So that is undoubtedly a single point of uh, of failure. How do we know how to do that? Well, we have the package spec. And uh, that's not too nice because the 144 pin um, PGA, pin grid array that we're using, it was actually designed in 1985. And as you can see here, these are taken from the spec. Um, this table is written by hand. It's not even using a word processor. And what you can see here is the pin grid on the bottom where each of these things have a letter over here and a number over here. So when we want to go to, you know, some sort of a number and letter, we uh, look up the, uh, you know, whatever it is over here, uh, A2 or whatever, and we find the actual pin that um, we're, we're talking about. We have over here the diagram of the package, what it looks like inside, where the bonds are, um, where we connect internally to the die, and how they externally, um, we can see them kind of in the microscope or whatever. Um, they go down over into the pin grid array underneath. So these are all numbered from uh, 1 to 144 all the way around. And as you can see here, there's a table inside that says bonding pad number one, which is, you know, somewhere over here. Um, uh, it goes to pin number D3. So you would look up uh, D over here and three over here. It goes to that pin. So if I know that, you know, uh, my clock or whatever was connected to bonding pad number one, uh, then I would go to pin D3, stick a probe into here, and I should see that I'm getting my clock or VDD was connected over here and so forth. So I have to look through this type of a schematic to understand what I'm doing on my, my board itself to see that the board is okay. Okay, but um, we send that to the bonding house and we're, they're supposed to connect it as we sent it to them. And again, that doesn't go through any automated verification. Okay, so we went and we looked at the chip. We stuck it under a microscope and we first looked at Bianca and we see that Bianca is nice and we have this tool that makes these pretty pictures and we can write the names of the people who worked on it and so forth and so on. And when we look at Lupulus, well, what do we see? Lupulus is actually rotated. You see that the picture is here on the side and we were like, okay, great, we got it. The chip was turned around. This has happened to us before. The bonding house accidentally um, flipped it onto the side. Now we go over, we run to the PCB, we turn the chip around, we stick it in. It doesn't work. Then we start trying to think, well, if it was rotated, will the right thing be connected to the other thing? Is it supposed to work? Did we just burn out the chip? What's going on? And so forth and so on. And after thinking about it for a while and looking closely and so forth, we double checked and we see that um, we just actually put the picture um, uh, rotated 90 degrees to the left because it fit in better. So there was no mistake. The orientation was correct and we had to go back to the drawing board. 
So after a while, one of the things we started to do was compare the bonding of the two chips because we were almost certain it has to be a bonding problem. I mean, it's the same chip. Everything is supposed to be the same. It must be bonding. We knew it was bonding. Well, something did turn out to be really strange on the bottom edge when we started comparing the bonding, uh, the, the things that we sent to the bonding house and looking at the microscope and trying to understand what is actually connected to what inside the package. And we saw something really strange. On the bottom um, side here, edge of Bianca, we see that there aren't very many bonds over in this type of an area. But if we look at the one in Lupulus, you can see that there are a lot of bonds over here. And this looked a little fishy and we started to dig deeper. And when we got down into like a close-up picture, we can see here that there is a wire here on Lupulus that actually was there in Bianca that was connected, and here it's not connected. And when we look at that, that is package pin number 57. So we traced where package pin number 57 was on that table we had before, and what do we see? Hmm, package pin number 57 over here, pad X 40 M C L K. Oh, it's the clock of the chip. Well. That made us breathe a big sigh of relief. The bonding house forgot to connect this pad, and therefore we don't have a clock to the chip, and that's why nothing works, and things like the UART don't work. So we found the culprit. Life is good. Not connecting the clock is really a good reason for nothing to work. Basically, removing the chip from the socket gave the exact same response as having the chip in the socket. And this made a lot of sense because we weren't even giving a clock. And without a clock, really, a digital system can't do anything. So we all breathed a sigh of relief. We got ready for measurements. Um, we went to the bond house. They fixed our bonding over there. They gave us a chip that had that extra bond that, uh, that was missed before. And everything looked good. We, we kind of took pictures of it. And we saw that it really looked like it was connected now. And everything is going to be great. So we stuck the chip back into the socket. We connect our USB-C. We hit, you know, enter on our Hello World program. And we got the exact same response from the chip. Well, that really put us in a bad situation. So let's see what we did next.